today I'm going to try and put together a fourth quarter finance update. Quite a lot has happened in the last couple of months from an income perspective and we're now in October which means we are officially in the last quarter for the year. So I thought I'd do an update as to how things are going. Um, I have done other small little updates as I go, obviously, but I thought I would do a roundup. Uh, I might have to film this in bits because there's quite a lot here and I am bound to miss something off. So I'm going to start with income, including all my income streams, that includes the ones that I don't declare because it's me selling, you know, um, clothes out my wardrobe or being given money for birthdays and Christmas, which isn't declarable income. I've now got 12 income streams. Some of them are very small. Some of them are obviously much bigger. They are all important, they all go into the same pot at the end of the day when it comes to income. And I've been putting them into pie charts because it's just a little bit easier to understand. So you will see pie charts probably coming up somewhere around here. So in the last couple of months, back in August, I gained two new income streams and these are important income streams because they're quite big. One of them is something I've talked about before which is the clinical trials research that I've finally managed to get accepted onto. I've been trying to get onto clinical studies since the beginning of last year but they're quite difficult to get onto depending on what studies you apply for and very often you get screened out. You get paid for your time, so if you go to a three hour health screening and they don't accept you onto the actual trial, you still get paid for your time. So a three hour uh, clinical trial screening, which is a full health checkup, that they then use to decide if you're eligible for the actual study, will pay you about 75 pounds. So your time is not wasted. It's a really good way to top up your income, even if you don't get accepted, because you might go to dozens of these screenings every year and not get on any of the actual trials, but you'll still be making a bit of money out of it. So that's all good. It is sporadic work because after each trial, you have to wait three months before you can do another one because the drug that you may or may not have had in your system needs time to work out so that it doesn't affect the next trial. So, at the most, you could do four trials a year, if you got them all. Now, I know people that, man that have been back dozens of times over the years and done lots of trials. Some people are making, uh, pretty much making a living out of it, but it depends on you as a person, it depends what the trials are for, and it depends how many different clinical trials companies you use. I know some people use quite a few and go up and down the country to them because it's worth their time and effort and if they don't have other jobs they're free to do that and theoretically I could do that but I don't want to be travelling all the way down to London, all the way across to Leeds, um, all, all sorts of other places. I'm, I'm not that into it and I quite like that this will be, it's a good addition to my income, it is not the only thing I rely on. So I did my, tr my first proper trial back in August and September and I've documented that. If you go to my videos you'll find it there. And I got um, just over £2,500 for a nine day study and that money includes going to the health screening, the follow ups, they account for all your time that, that's required. So that's been a really great addition, has made a huge difference. The other thing that I'm doing, which I've also spoken about, is the, um, the cleaning agency I joined, really just for top up money. Um, and I got really lucky, the first week I joined, I got my first client, which is four hours a week, which is more than a lot of the cleaning jobs are. You're paid £11 an hour, so it's just over the minimum wage. 
it's nice because it's just over the road from where I live, which means I can be as flexible as I need to be in terms of when I go to clean. And it's always evenings because it's um, it's a business premises. But if I go and do two hours at, say, 6 o'clock, I'm coming out at 8, it's literally a three-minute walk across the road and I'm home. So that's absolutely brilliant. And now that I am back from my, uh, my clinical trials work and my um, trip away to my parents, I put myself back onto the app. And I put myself back onto the app on the first Monday I was back because I came home on a Friday. I'd only been back on the app about 20 minutes and a new job came up. I applied for it. 20 minutes later, I got a call from the agency people and I've now got the job. And I start in... I was starting in two days. I don't know when I'm going. To, this video is going to come out. This is three hours every fortnight. It's just down the road. It's a five-minute drive from where I am, so that's great. And because it's three hours every fortnight, it's good money, but also allows me to pick up other clients that are in the area. I'm trying to stay really close to home. I don't want to be bothered with driving halfway across Manchester. There are plenty of other people on the app who need work. I'd rather stay close to home. I don't want to be faffing around doing long journeys for a couple of hours. Um, because I don't get paid for the travel time or the petrol, although I can reclaim that back on my self-assessment, because this is work, and I used to claim mileage in my business all the time when I was doing a lot of photo shoots and going out onto site. I haven't done that in quite a few years, because I just don't use the car for work anymore. I don't drive around to photo shoots, um, that sort of thing, so I haven't worried about it. But there will be cleaning jobs where I am driving and although, you know, five or six miles here or there might not seem like a lot, yeah, I think you can claim something like 45 pence per mile back on your expenses. So if I end up going into, say, like, if my money ends up going above um, the personal allowance every year, I can then use that to help me get my tax bill down or cancel it out completely, depending on how much money I earn. Um, I don't know I'm going to hit that this year. Um, back in the summer, my projected income, well, let's say middle of August, because that's when my working tax credit stopped, I projected that my income for the year was going to be just over £9,000. And I was looking at a deficit of about £3,500 on just paying for my basic essentials in life. I wasn't talking about going on holiday, buying presents, going out to eat, going to pubs and stuff. This is just for basics. Um, because my life, let me just have a look. Uh, my life at the moment costs about £12,100 a year. That accounts for rent for petrol that I need for my car, for food, I have an everything else category which covers um, any supermarket shopping that isn't food, so that's like cleaning products, it counts for my dentist bills, any gifts that I do buy, although I try to be careful about that, um, it also covers, um, oh, the outgoings also cover my car breakdown, my gas and electric for the year, uh, the expenses on my two little Etsy businesses which I have, council tax, mobile phone, water rates, car insurance, business insurance, home insurance and my car service and MOT. That's pretty much everything I need to run my life at a basic level and I'm quite happy with that. I don't need the extras. So ideally I would like to break even. So currently as it stands at the moment, let me just find the right spreadsheet because I've been updating my numbers today so yes my current outgoings for the entire year as of today when I'm recording this which is on the 2nd of October is £12,321.36p that covers everything my current projected income for this year is currently 11,394 but I have some predictions based on the rest of the year for other things that I earn so I, I think I'm looking at an income if everything stays as it is as it is today my income for the year will be 11,729 which will mean I'm 591 pounds short 
on my income. Now, I'm pretty sure that will change because things always seem to be changing. So my income streams at the moment include book sales. I wrote a book in 2017 and although I don't promote it very much, it still does make the occasional sale and I probably need to get on and start trying to promote that. Uh, I have a little miscellaneous section with, which is where if I use Zifit to sell a few personal books, things like that. I have eBay and Vinted Personal which is me selling my stuff like shoes I don't want, uh, winter coats, um, dresses, things like that. So again that's just personal clear out. I have Etsy Business One which is my fashion jewellery and homeware business which isn't doing well this year at all. Cost of living crisis, people are not as frivolous with their spends as they have been and I haven't been actively encouraging people to buy things they don't need. To me that's unethical. I've stopped buying anything that isn't essential so why should I force other people to just for my benefit? Anyway, that's a whole other thing on a whole other YouTube channel. Um, government and energy rebates. Um, we all had the energy rebate which covered the price rise which I think was last year and early this year and I have had one of the um, cost of living crisis payments. So there's a bit of money coming from that. Gifted cash, which is birthdays and Christmas. Um, again, it's non-declarable income, but it's, you know, it's all going into the same pot as far as keeping a roof over my head is concerned. I've got the cleaning agency, which is rapidly coming up into being quite a good earner. My survey income, which is still ticking along quite nicely. We're still on track to be earning about £2,228 a year on that. That's a combination of surveys that I do through apps and also market research where you'll do longer projects for bigger money. So it might be an hour interview on Zoom, which will make you anything between, say, £40 and £80 pounds a go. They're harder to get. Um, but when you get them, they're worth it. And there's so little effort. There really isn't much effort involved. Savings interest. Um, I do have savings locked away in long-term accounts because that's the only way you can get a decent rate. All mine are locked away at the moment. I have to seesaw my savings because I have to pay my rent in six monthly chunks where I have to make sure that the right amount of money is available. Um, in those six months, it's rare for me to be able to make up the entire rent amount. Um, in income and I don't want to be in a position where I have to say to them look can I have a few extra weeks because I can't afford to pay the rent on time I don't want to be in that situation I've been living in where I live now for five and a half years I've always paid that six monthly on time I don't want that to change so I try to be really careful about that working tax credits which has now ended for me ended in August and I am now on universal credit I don't expect to make a penny out of universal credit because my income is up and down, there are good months where I earn um, quite good money. Like when I get the clinical trials working, there might be a sudden influx of an extra two and a half thousand pounds. There might be nothing, it really depends. Um, and with the because I have a variable income and because I have savings. All those things are taken into account on your universal credit. So if you have savings, they take off X number of pence per £250 of, in, of uh, savings that you have and they knock that off what you're allowed. So I think looking at the full amount for a month for universal credit is something like £368. I think the chances of me getting anything from it are minimal. The reason I applied for Universal Credit was because I was on managed migration, which means that I was forced to stop my working tax credits and go on to Universal um, Credit if I chose to. But it meant I had what they have a start, what they call a start-up year, which is a protected year, which means if you don't quite fit the criteria, in my case, it's um, partly because I'm self-employed, partly because I have savings. Um, they have allowances to allow you to to do universal credit anyway because it's a protected year so if i had applied fresh for universal credit not having come from working tax credits i would not be on this but i think the chances of me actually getting anything out of 
universal credit is incredibly minimal. I don't think I, I think each month they will knock off so much that I just won't get anything. And that's fair enough. The reason I really wanted to apply it for universal credit was to see what the system was like from the inside. All I hear really are bad things about it, about the way it's run, about the way it works, about the people who run it, about how it doesn't help people. And I do agree that if you are on a very low income, then these amounts of money are pretty useless to you. Excuse me a moment. But my understanding of universal credit is that it is not an income. It's designed to be a small top up whilst you look for work and whilst you improve your work because you have to keep reporting on where you're looking for work, how you're looking for work, are you doing enough? Where on working tax credits you didn't. You just did your self-assessment every year and they would calculate your working tax credits based on the income that you had made and, and that would apply for the next year and then the next year you do your self-assessment and they'd recalculate it and if things had changed a lot they just changed the amount of money. So you didn't have to prove what you were doing you didn't have, there was no stipulation on how much you could have in savings, you just got it. And that's been like that for quite a while. I've had working tax credits for not a lot of years, but some years. And of course, universal credit has been brought in to make sure that those people are removed from the system, um, which is why people like me are no longer eligible and good, because Frankly, I don't deserve to be on universal credit. I did it because I wanted to get inside the system so that I could make YouTube videos, basically. Um, but not for me, because I felt that when I was looking around for information about being self-employed on the benefit system, on universal credit, I wasn't finding what I needed. I didn't want to see clinical videos from businesses on, this is how you apply. This is the eligibility criteria. I wanted to see videos about how people were actually living it. Things like this. Actual someone sitting down going, I've had a terrible week, work was cancelled, and I'm only getting 20 quid from Universal Credit. And I still can't find those videos. It's mostly um, stuff about Universal Credit from, from a business point of view, from a how-to point of view, which is all well and good, but I, I'm really interested in the real-life stories. I found one or two... Um, channels, there was there was one chap who, I think he's trying to live on Universal Credit, but he gets a lot of trolls because I haven't watched all his videos, but it sounds like he's doing some um, backhander work out of pocket, not declaring. It sounds like he's moaning about things that um, he talks about not being able to work, but you know, he can go out for the day and have fun and stuff like that. So I haven't watched it all because I don't like videos like that. The trolling in the comments is not helpful. I'm sure this guy has some other kind of backstory. I haven't watched it, so um, I don't like to make knee-jerk reactions to things without knowing full stories. So that's not the kind of thing that I really want to watch. So I'm doing this from the perspective of being self-employed and just getting inside the system and looking at it and looking what it really involves. My neighbour is also self-employed. He had to close down his business in April because things have got so bad. He went to Universal Credit for help and they wouldn't help him because he was self-employed. But he's never been, he's never claimed working tax credits or benefits before. So he was left on his own. And I found out just um, just this week that he's finally managed to get himself a job. He's had to take an apprenticeship in a job that he's already been doing for years as a self-employed person. But it's an income. He now has a full-time job again and that's all he cares about because he was facing the prospect of having to give up the flat and move back in with his parents and he's older than me. It's not fun. So he's just glad to be working again and I'm glad he's working again. He's a nice neighbour and it'd be nice if he stays. So here we are. So yes, 12 income streams now, in their own small way. It sounds like a lot of work, it isn't. I'm very careful with how I manage my spreadsheets. 
Um, I've got into a really good system over the years from being self-employed for the last 11 years. How to run a good spreadsheet, how to manage my budgets properly, how to register my receipts, how to do self-assessment. It's second nature to me. I don't worry about it. I come from a background of being a secretary and a PA in investment banking, so money is not a scary thing to me. I have no debts. Let's just remember that. I have no debts. I don't owe any money. Um, I don't buy things on tick. Um, so I've, I've spoken briefly about my outgoings as well and I have a pie chart for that as well. As you can see the big problem in the room is rent which takes up 56% of my outgoings. And that's not because I have a massive rent because actually I don't. My rent is about to go up as it goes up every year like everybody else's. Uh, but it's only gone up by £50, so my rent for my two-bedroom home is now £600 a year. And I pay that in two six-monthly chunks, and that's because I don't pass any um, credit checks for anything, because I'm self-employed and on a low income. I can do that. I've always done that. That's been my life for the last six years. It's just the way things are. So, yeah, so there's lots of little outgoings on here. Lots of them are in small slithers, apart from the obvious elephant in the room. Um, my food, which is probably the most interesting one, it's showing on there at the moment as I've, um, I've spent £78.31 this year on my grocery bills. Back in May, I started to implement a no-spend policy on food, and I do that by only buying yellow stickers. I also earn supermarket gift cards on some of the surveys that I do, which means that I can pick up gift cards for Sainsbury's, Morrison's, and Tesco. And then what I try to do is use cashback apps to get free or discounted products and I'll use the gift cards which means that I can then cash the gift cards in back into cash. So not only have I ended up with free food but I've turned the gift cards that I earned for doing surveys back into cash so it effectively kind of doubles the money. And by doing that I've managed to have a no spend on food since May. It's a zero spend budget based on those kinds of fluctuations and it works really well for me. I have quite enough food. Um, I like the challenge of going into the supermarket on a Thursday evening when they tend to have most of their yellow stickers and just seeing what's there, seeing what I can get. But I always try to keep a well stocked cupboard and freezers with discounted products so that if I go in on any particular day and there's nothing on the shelves for me to buy, it doesn't matter, there are things there at home that I can use. And I cook everything from scratch, so I'm used to, I bake my own bread, I make my own cakes and biscuits and things like that. Um, all, most of my meals are um, one pan stir fry type lunches, which work really well for me. They're loaded with vegetables, um, and I have I do have meat, but I am quite restricted on it. It's quite an expensive product now, so I'll tend to have a few things in the freezer that I'll always keep, like a bag of um, chicken breasts and some sausages and some cooking bacon, which is, comes in really cheap packages. And I will just alternate between those things. I don't need tons of meat, so if I'm doing, say, a stir-fry, um, whether that's noodles or pasta or potato stir-fry, and it'll be like half a rasher of bacon but it doesn't matter because the meal is loaded up with vegetables. Um, as you can tell by looking at me, I mean, I have got several layers on today because it's quite cold, so I look like a bit of a Michelin man. I'm, I'm not really this bad, but um, I, I, I don't have any problems with starving to death. I wish that was the case. I could do with losing quite a bit of weight, I think, um, and eating less isn't helping. <laughs> I am cutting back my eat. I only do two meals a day. Um, anyway, so yes, not starving to death, not spending any money on food works for me. The other thing that I earn from 
which has been a real success over the last couple of years, is taking surveys online. I have about 14 apps on my phone for various survey companies and I will put a list of the names down here because you might want to try some of these. Some of these are slow burn, so there are some, some sites like YouGov and Y Surveys and a few others where you have to accumulate quite a lot of money before you can cash out. But that might be that amount might be in between twenty and fifty pounds. So when they come, they always come in a nice, healthy chunk. Others will want you to cash out when you hit a fiver, four pounds, and there are others where you can cash out at almost nothing. So on a on a weekly basis, I tend to do one big cash out on a Friday, and then all that money will go into my Easy Access Savings account, which is with Tandem, which is five percent and that just accrues interest over the course of the month and of course the interest is an important side hustle for me it's a passive income, it's one thing I don't have to worry about and it just trickles away and interest comes in um, and that's just um, a nice passive income which is one less thing for me to worry about so certain survey sites pay in gift cards. Um, there were some sites, some of my sites go up and down, so there's a few this year that aren't doing as well. Some that I have earned very well from. There was a site that I've been using all year called Moviegoers, where you would, uh, if you're watching TV and you saw an advert for a film that was coming up at the cinema, you would go into the site you would do your review of it, say where you'd seen it, what you thought of it, whether it made you want to go to the cinema. And as long as you got three of those a week, you would earn £2.50. And when you hit £10, you could cash out. And I was cashing out in Morrison's gift cards, which was really handy, because it's the only one that gives me Morrison's gift cards. They suddenly stopped offering the movie surveys, and now they've gone on to just doing ordinary surveys, and I'm getting nothing through. So I think that site is going to have to go. I have two sites which only pay in Nectar gift card, in sorry Nectar points, which get transferred directly to my Sainsbury's Nectar card, and this is a really good one. I love this. So one site is called Canvas, and you get it through the Sainsbury's Nectar card. I think you have to be invited. I'm not entirely sure about that, but so far this year I've earned ninety-five pounds um, and thirty-one pence in Nectar points. Now that's more than I've spent all year in food, so that means that my Nectar card currently has about £32 on it, which means that I can go into Sainsbury's at any time and do a cheap shop and not have to pay for anything, and that's great. That's a nice little backup if other gift card situations um, dry up. So for instance, there's another one called eRewards, which also pays out in Nectar gift cards, but you have to get... I think it's like uh, a thousand points before you can before you can check out, and they've been doing well. And suddenly the website's changed, and I'm not seeing anything anymore. So that's a bit. Uh, that one might have to go as well. On the other hand, I acquired a new site just a few months ago called Cashwalk, where they pay you in coins for every 100 steps you walk. Uh, it was uh, paying out um, up to 10,000 steps a day. That is now 20,000 steps a day. And you can cash out when you reach uh, 2,500 coins, which takes about 12 days. But you know what? If I'm earning a tenner a month just walking steps, I'll have that. And it's encouraged me to do a lot more exercise because I'm earning for every step I do. So there are lots of days where I now hit 20,000 steps a day and I'm earning something for it. So that's been a really good one. One of my favorite sites is called QMe. They pay out once they hit a pound. Um, I've earned nearly 200 pounds this year from that site. That's a really good one. Lots of surveys come through that one. Ipsos, which is Ipsos I say, pays out in either PayPal or I get Tesco gift cards depending on whether I want to cash out at a fiver or a tenner. There's the Shopix website which is where you take photographs of the receipts 
that you get in the shops and it gives you points and when you accrue a certain number of points you can cash out that's not been too bad this year either swag bucks which is a very popular one with other people i never used to like swag bucks last year i hated it it's now become quite a good site and i'm getting quite a lot of surveys for that another one's called mobrog they're quite consistent as well bulb share not as consistent, doesn't pay as well, sometimes has in-shop surveys where you go and look at products and um, you take pictures of shelves and, and you describe what you see and that sort of thing. Not, uh, it's a more interesting site. I do like the way the app's laid out. I like that it's more interactive, but it doesn't earn as well. Atapol is another good one that I really like. They cash out at £4 and I have made £135 this year from that one. Branded surveys it used to be a good site, not getting as many surveys, um, but I have made £42 this year. Let's not complain about that. Every penny counts. Other more sporadic sites, so we have Y surveys, which pay out when they hit £50, and I've had a few of those this year, so that's not bad, 150 quid. There's also a really good site called Views Bank, where you answer a poll every day, and it's amazing how, how quickly that accrues, actually. It will cash out at £12 and it cashes out at certain times of the month. Um, so that's not bad. Your Say Pays has to cash out at 20 Bit of a slow burner, but still worth the 20 quid because it's not taking up much of your time. There's another one called Mingle. Influence is one of my favourites. It's a Vox Pop site, so all the surveys you do um, are videos. It'll send you a link and say, tell us about your shopping habits this week. And... You get to talk for, I think it's 1 minute 40 seconds, and they'll pay you 25p. And sometimes you'll get a series of questions on a similar subject. So I had a set of questions last week. It was seven questions. You answer one, and then when you've submitted your response, it'll send you the next one. And each answer earned me 63p, and I was just talking about different aspects of sustainable ice cream and what I thought about that. And they're really quick and easy. I like... I never used to like doing videos, this is one of the reasons I did it, um, but I really, really enjoy the Influence site, it's a really good one, and it's quick and easy. I say, YouGov, I've earned £150 so far this year by doing that, they're the ones where all the polls turn up on BBC News and things like that. And there are other little odd ones here and there, there's one called Zest, there's one called Potlock, um, and you'll get the odd little thing that crops up. But this all adds up, so, so far this year I've made over £1,600. I'm, I think I'm on track to uh, well over £2,000 just sitting there with my phone. Uh, and that, that's good because I can sit and do that in between doing other things. So when I'm not doing the cleaning work, when I'm not doing YouTube videos, when I'm not looking for other types of income, and, and it means that I can sit there, you know, I might be commuting on a bus, I might be waiting for a train, I might be in a queue at the supermarket, I might be watching TV in the evening and I can just go through and do whatever surveys come up. So that's, it's not really a passive income, it doesn't require a lot of energy. My bum is on the sofa, I've got my phone in my hand and I'm answering questions about life, the universe and everything. And that'll do me very nicely. So that's that. My everything else category of spending, which I've talked about, includes household non-food, uh, medical, dentist, any presents, food out, like I'm going to restaurants anymore, any DIY, anything for the garden, um, any postage for personal items that I might have sold on eBay or um, whatever, um, anything for the car, all my car is paid up for for the year. Um, and so far this year, and I've bad budgeted in my Christmas spend because I have a very tight budget for Christmas spending on gifts and things. It's now looking at about eight hundred and eighty-three pounds for the year. That's basically what I what I call discretionary income. Although some of those things are essential, such as the dentist. Yeah, that's probably the big the big must in there. And I spend about three hundred and seventy pounds a year on the dentist. Because thanks to spending 10 years of not going to a dentist when I should have done, I'm now paying the price. And I now have like six appointments a year or something like that. And that's my own fault. Petrol, I rarely go anywhere in my car anymore. I will only go when I am going too far to walk or I'm getting or um, delivering heavy stuff or I'm going down to my parents. And that's where the money goes because... 
uh, they live five hours away um, and I do that that journey every quarter so my petrol spend for this year is looking like it's about 317 pounds uh, which is better than last year which was 550 when the petrol prices went through the roof so I'm quite glad about that and I think that probably covers most things that's a lot um, I am going to continue trying to get more cleaning jobs um, I'm allowed to get up to 26 hours a week in cleaning and I am nowhere near that um, but I'm just seeing how things fit in this one over the road is easy this new one is going to be only going to be three hours every two weeks provided that one um, pans out well I haven't even started it yet so at least when I'm recording this um, but as and when the right kinds of jobs come up that I feel will work for me I can take those on so I am hoping that my income will increase an amount before the end of the year. Whether it will accrue five hundred and ninety-one pounds worth, I don't know. And of course, if something happens, and I, if I have an unplanned for expense, maybe something happens to the car, or um, something else happens, um, that shortfall could increase. But I'm not worried about that because I'm also careful to keep a small stash of available savings to one side it's only a small amount but it covers me for any shortfalls in my income every month uh, where my bills are concerned which means um, I never get into debt I'm never late paying for something because we don't do things like that here and I've been out of debt for quite a few years and I have no intention of going back there so that pretty much covers where I am here at the beginning of October who knows what will happen in the next few months. It will be great to get another clinical trial in December before Christmas and it will be nice to get some more cleaning work. I don't want to get too much of the cleaning work. I have a problem with my boredom ratio is really bad. I get bored of doing things very, very quickly and if things become too routine, I really switch off which was one of the reasons I stopped office jobs because I felt with the daily commutes the same old crap in the office the same old toxic environments and that's why I stopped doing that so I don't want to end up with tons and tons of very laborious routine cleaning work but based on where I am at the moment I don't need enormous amounts of cleaning work how that will change next year, I don't know. Obviously, at the end of December, I will start putting together my spreadsheets and my projections for 2024. And I will, of course, be doing a video about that because, obviously, some things will have changed quite a lot by then. Um, working tax credits will be gone, so that's over £2,000 of regular income disappeared. I'm sure that bills will go up and down next year, so who knows what my standard expenses will be for the year. Who knows how things will change next year. I'm not even going to think that far ahead, it's too much. But for now I think that probably covers everything. I'm sure I have forgotten some things which I needed to talk about here. And if I have that will be coming next, otherwise that's it. That's my update. Gosh that's 38 minutes, that's quite enough talking about maths and money for one afternoon um, that, that's it that's all I have to say I hope you've enjoyed it hope you found it of interest if you have any questions about any aspects of my income if you need any links or advice on any of the things that I do already then do let me know um, do like and subscribe to my little channel I will put things here in a moment um, because it really helps and if I ever get to YouTube's limits I might be able to start earning some sort of income from YouTube but I'm so far off those minimum limits I think it's going to take years to be honest with you but I enjoy doing this I don't do this for the perceived income I do this because it's not to have somebody to talk to when you live on your own and you work on your own um, you end up talking to the walls so I thought I might as well just talk to a video camera instead so here we are. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Keep following. 
Um, do comment, do like, do subscribe. It all helps. And speak to you again soon. Thanks for watching.